Uh, first off, once again, thank you all for joining us here today. Uh, my name is Derek Warhol, and I'm the Regional Manager for International Student Recruitment at the University of the Fraser Valley. Uh, and if you are here today, you are thinking about possibly coming to Canada to study for uh, your educational journey, uh, whether it's undergrad or postgrad, uh, and hopefully I'll be able to give you some insights about possibly studying at the University of the Fraser Valley. Uh, before we go any farther, I do just want to take some time to recognize that for myself, where I am right now, uh, this presentation is taking place on, on the traditional and unceded territory of the Stalo people, the people of the river. And I want to quickly also recognize our closest neighbors, which is the, the Masqui, Sumath, and Kwantlen Indigenous Nations people. And also really want to take a quick time to say happy Diwali to all of those who are celebrating Diwali around the world. Uh, we have a fun celebration set up on campus here today for, for those students who celebrate Diwali. So wherever you are in the world, if you are celebrating, happy Diwali to you as well. So how this is going to work for all of you is I'm going to share my screen in just a second here uh, and bring up a quick presentation. Uh, the presentation should take about 30 to 40 minutes uh, for me to go through to give you some information about the school, about our programs, admissions requirements, how to apply. Uh, and then after that, I am going to open it up to all of you uh, to answer, to ask some questions and we'll do some Q&A. Now, if you do have some questions that come up throughout the presentation, no problem. Uh, feel free to use the little Q&A button that's down at the bottom there for you uh, to ask your question at any time. Um, but just so you know, I'm gonna save those questions to the end uh, of the presentation and get to them there. So questions, please keep them coming. We'd love to answer as many questions as I possibly can. Uh, again, use that Q&A button down at the side there for you. With that, let's get started. And I will share my screen with you all. Once again, I'll just quickly say thank you again for coming up to the presentation for UFC. Um, quick overview about the university to give you some insight about us. Uh, UFV, the University of the Fraser Valley, we are a public post-secondary uh, located in the city of Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada. Now, don't worry if you're not familiar with Canadian geography. My next two slides after this one, I'm going to give you a little bit of a geography lesson to show you exactly where we are. There's no test, but there will be a little bit of a geography lesson. So that's coming up shortly for you. Uh, UFV, as I mentioned, we're a public post-secondary. Uh, we are known for our small class sizes hands-on career-focused education uh, that helps students get careers after they graduate. Uh, and when I say small class sizes, you can see on the screen there, our average student class size is about 25 students per class. The biggest class size you'll see with us, and this is from the first year all the way to the fourth year, is around 36 students per class. So we really want our students to get as much one-on-one -on -one faculty support as possible, which just makes for this great learning environment for all of our students. Uh, UFE, we are a medium-sized school in terms of student population. We have about 14,000 students uh, with right now uh, about 1,400 international students from all over the world. Uh, it really is this great mix of Canadian students and international students on campus studying together. Uh, when I say all over the world, I literally mean that. We have people actually just very much like this webinar right now. There's people all over the world on watching this webinar right now. Uh, we have people from, from Asia, from Africa, from Europe, from Latin America, all studying with us. So it just makes for this fun, vibrant atmosphere on campus. Now, I mentioned that geography lesson. Well, here you go. This is Canada. It's really big, as you all know. Uh, second largest country in land size. Uh, and for us, we are located in the province of British Columbia, which is the westernmost province of Canada. Some of you might be familiar, say, with Toronto, which is in the province of Ontario. Uh, and Ontario, Toronto is about a four to five hour flight away from where we are in BC. Now, for the, some of you who are thinking about, you know, why study in Canada, should this be your destination of choice or where to come? I mean, just so you know, Canada is consistently rated one of the best places in the world to study and consistently rated one of the best places in the world to just live and work uh, and go in here. Specifically, one of the best places in the world to live and on many lists would be the city of Vancouver and the surrounding area of Vancouver. Uh, and that's where we're located. Um, the city of Abbotsford is located at just 
one hour drive outside of downtown Vancouver. So this is the city of Vancouver. As I mentioned, consistently rated one of the top five most livable cities in the world. Uh, and if you haven't had a chance to visit Vancouver and the surrounding area, it's beautiful. Uh, I'm a little biased because I, you know, I grew up here. This has been my home, um, but I've been lucky enough to travel all over the world. Uh, and every time I come back to Vancouver, it still takes my breath away. Uh, it is honestly one of the greatest mix of nature and city life that you'll find pretty much anywhere. And where we are in terms of our campus, Abbotsford, as I mentioned, is just a one hour drive east of downtown Vancouver, which is fantastic for you as the students for a couple of different reasons. First is being a little bit outside of the major city. Uh, it just helps reduce the cost of living. Uh, as you probably know, if you live in the downtown core of any major city around the world, you know, rent and other costs of living just goes up a little bit. So being a little bit outside of that city helps reduce the cost of living. But again, we're only one hour away by car. Uh, so if students wanna pop in in the free time, on the weekends to be able to go and take in Vancouver, it's really easy to do. Another reason being just outside of Vancouver in the city of Abbotsford helps a lot is that you have so much more free, open and natural space uh, than, Abbots, uh, than Vancouver of where you are there. Uh, less traffic, less busy, more authentic Canadian culture is where you are. Uh, so it makes for this great learning environment for all of our students. Another great aspect of where we are geographically is you'll notice this kind of dark shaded area down at the bottom here. That is the United States. Uh, our campus, this little dot here, uh, is actually only a five minute drive away from the United States border. So if while you study with us, you also want to take advantage of our proximity to the United States and go down there for your free time or weekends or some vacations, you can absolutely do that. Our students love the fact that they can take advantage of the best of Canada and the United States while they study with us. Now, a little bit more about the city of Abbotsford specifically, um, so you can know more about the city that you would live in. I mentioned that we're an hour outside of Vancouver, outside of the major city. But Abbotsford itself is still a city. You know, we're the fifth largest city in our province. So everything you would want in a city we have here in Abbotsford, malls, movie theaters, shopping centers, restaurants, bars, cafes, we have it here as well. Uh, and I mentioned how diverse our campus is with people from all over the world. Abbotsford is just diverse. The city itself has people from all over the world living, studying, and working here as well. In fact, 33% of all of our residents, and just so you know, that's one out of every three people who live here in Abbotsford, uh, consider themselves a visible minority, someone of non-white, non-Caucasian descent. Uh, so it really makes, again, for this fun, dynamic, vibrant place for people to be able to live uh, because it really has someone from every corner of the world uh, living here as well. Last thing I'll just say about the city and the region itself, because I get this asked this question all the time. So let's talk about it, the winter and the winter months up here in Canada. Yes, Canada is known for our four seasons and we have uh, fall, winter, summer, spring, all of those four seasons. But here you go, where we are in the lower mainland, in the Fraser Valley, in Vancouver area, we have the warmest winter in all of Canada. In other parts of Canada during you know, November, December, Feb, January, February, when they might have minus 10 to minus 30 degrees and tons of snow, we're still green here. Uh, we generally stay above the, the freezing temperature line through winter. Yes, we get a couple days of snow and it can get a couple days of really cold here, but that is an anomaly. Uh, we are still one of the warmest places in Canada during the winter. So if you're not, into cold, 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 cold temperature, but you still want to enjoy, you know, experience a little bit of winter, west coast of Canada, it's exactly where you want to come for that. Now, when you do get here, another question I get asked all the time is about just getting around the city, you know, getting on and off campus, going from, you know, just around town in general. Well, all of our students, when you come here, uh, you'll actually also be given a free bus pass on the city transit system. Um, all you need to do is use your student ID card and you can swipe on to any of the city buses in Abbotsford. So it makes getting around the town extremely easy. We actually have a bus stop on campus. So regardless if you live on campus 
or off campus. So you can use the city transit for free to get around town and get to campus for your classes. Now you hear that I mentioned living on campus. Uh, so if you take a look at this little mini photo here, that is an aerial shot of our Abbotsford campus. And this back building, which you see kind of right over there, um, that is actually our residence building. So we do have people who live on campus. Uh, this is a great opportunity. If you have a chance to live on campus, I absolutely recommend this for at least your first year. It's not mandatory. You don't have to live on campus. You can choose to live off campus if you, uh, want to have your own apartment or if you have friends and family in the area totally okay there too uh, but in terms of just getting connected with the ufe community and, and building friendships and, and getting to know the place living on campus is a great opportunity and as an added bonus these residence buildings are like a two minute walk from all of the academic buildings so that means for all of you people who are not morning people if you have an 8.30 a.m. class and you live in this residence building, you could wake up at 8.25 a.m. and still make it to class on time. That is how close that residence building is to all the academic buildings. Big bonus. Uh, so yeah, uh, other parts about residence is everybody who lives in residence, you get your very own private bedroom. So you, get a, you don't have to share a bedroom with anybody else. But what you do have to do is just share an apartment suite with one other person. So all of our housing suites have two private bedrooms and then a shared bathroom with a shower and then a shared kitchen area. Uh, and then on all of the main common room floors, uh, there's also larger kitchens. So students can actually do all of their own cooking, all of their own shopping right out of the residence building, which pro tip really helps to reduce costs as well. Um, doing your own shopping, doing your own cooking, a great way to save some money and just be able to get what you want for food. Now, of course, though, we know that there are a lot of students who come to Canada and, well, don't really like to cook or maybe just don't know how to cook. And so for that, of course, yes, we still offer a great meal plan option for those students who would like to use the meal plan. Uh, the meal plan itself um, is based out of our, our Cascades cafeteria, the main cafeteria area, and multiple different options for food throughout the day uh, held at the cafeteria. Uh, but if you're interested in other types of food options, uh, we have things like Fairgrounds, which is our version of Starbucks. It's actually a student-run coffee shop. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about employment later, but if you want to work on campus, uh, our, ca our campus restaurants and ca coffee shops are always a good place to go to. Uh, we also have things like Streets, which does tacos and quesadillas, Rebel Pizza, which does, well, pizza. Uh, and then, of course, we have the iconic and Canadian Tim Hortons. Because in Canada, you can't be a public university and not have a Tim Hortons on your campus. Pretty sure somewhere in the Canadian constitution, it says we're supposed to have a Tim Hortons on our campus. Don't look that up, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's there. Uh, and for those of you who are around the world and you're looking at me going, what is a Tim Hortons? Come to Canada and you'll find out. They're everywhere. Uh, so yeah, lots of different food options for you on campus uh, to be able to use throughout the day, uh, if you like that. Now, one of the biggest and probably one of the most important things that we try to do for all of our international students when you come to campus is make sure that we can help you succeed in all aspects of your life when you become a student. Whether it's an academic achievement, you know, personal connection achievement, uh, and other aspects of your life as well, we have so many different support services for you as an international student. Uh, this starts right off away with our international student orientation team. They are the rah rah rah, welcome to UFE team. Uh, they're the ones who, even before you arrive in Canada, are going to be connecting with you, contacting you, uh, and letting you know some information, get you st started on your journey into UFE. And then once you arrive, helping you to get to know the campus, build friendships and connections, and get to know the city as well. After that, of course, very important is your academic success. And so we both have our international academic advising team, the team who will help you with course registration, course planning. Uh, if you're thinking of doing, say, a master's program after your undergraduate degree and you want to know more about the entrance requirements for that, they can help you with all of those. Uh, they're every step of your way to help you course plan for your education. And then we have this, the Academic Success Center. Now, what this is, is this is free 
tutoring, free tutoring and academic help in all subjects that you could possibly have, whether it's English writing, math, stats, business, psychology, chemistry, whatever. Uh, we have people who are there to be able to help you with your studies if you need that help. Uh, and we also have students who are like typically a average students who still come down to the academic success center just for a little bit of a refresher as well. So if you need a little bit of assistance with your studies, the academic success center is there again to help you with that. Now, of course, one of the biggest reasons uh, any student normally comes to Canada to study is to eventually get a good career. Uh, and one of the most important services that we have is our Center for Experiential and Career Education, CECE. Or as I like to call it, because that's a mouthful, it's just still the Career Center uh, for short. Uh, our Career Center can help you in a lot of different ways to try to get some work experience before you graduate. Uh, first and foremost, that starts with probably the biggest career experience option, which is co-op, um, co-op cooperative education. For those of you who are not familiar with co-op or haven't heard that term before, uh, what that is, it's similar to a paid internship position. So how this would work is if you get into co-op, uh, you would do a full semester of work in your field of study. Again, this is paid work in your field of study. And while you're doing this paid work, you're still earning credits for your university degree at the same time. So it's fantastic. High level Canadian work experience, paid Canadian work experience in your field of study and university credits all in one go. Uh, I highly recommend this to every single person I talk to. Uh, in fact, what I say about co-op is, this is my spiel, I'm about to say this, and I say this in every presentation, I say this on every campus tour, every in-person event I do, and I say it in the exact same way. If you come to our school to study, awesome. That's great, we would love to have you. If you end up going somewhere else, Hey, fair enough, I wish you all the best. But whatever school you end up going to, if they have a co-op option, do it. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Because uh, it really is one of the best things to help you land a, a great job after you graduate while you're still a student. So that's just my spiel, co-op, you come to UFE, do it. Uh, outside of co-op, um, if you do want to work part-time just to try to help cover costs, whether it's for you know, rent, living, get some food, or just have some extra spending money, in Canada, students can work up to 20 hours a week during the school year, and then up to 40 hours a week during the summer break. Uh, and our Career Center can help with some job search options. Uh, we do great things with resume writing, coaching, cover letter writing, coaching, interview skill training. We have a digital job posting board uh, that posts both on campus and sometimes off campus job opportunities as well for students. Um, so you can go there and get some opportunities to look for, for some part time jobs as well. Uh, and then lastly, for students who want to stay in Canada after you graduate to work as a public post secondary, uh, our programs do qualify for up to a three year post graduation work permit as well. Um, so if you are interested in graduating and then staying here uh, and working as well, uh, you can absolutely do that through our programs. But of course, coming to Canada is not just all work and study. Uh, we want you to be able to have some fun too. Uh, and so for that, we have lots of different clubs and associations on campus. Uh, we have some varsity sports teams uh, that play at the highest Canadian university sports league. Uh, so if you're interested in sports and want to come and cheer them on, they're always grateful to have people in the stands to watch them. Uh, or if yourself, you just want to take part in some fun intramural sports. Uh, we have drop-in basketball, badminton, there's fitness classes, we have a fitness facility on campus. And then off campus, uh, you actually get free access to a swimming pool, ice skating rink, and other fitness facilities at some of the rec centers that are around town as well. Uh, so lots of ways to you know, have fun, get involved on campus, uh, and stay fit and active while you're doing it too. Now I mentioned the student orientation team, the rah, 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 welcome to UFE team. Um, these are some of their programs that they try to do to try to help students uh, get acquainted to campus when you come here. Uh, one of the ones that we do is a, is a program called Friends Without Borders. Uh, this is kind of like an intercultural friendship group uh, where we have a group of Canadian and international current students who volunteer uh, to you know, build connections with our new students as they come in. And then we also have this fun one, uh, which is called En Route. 
And thankfully, we're bringing this back now that we're kind of getting to the tail end of the pandemic. And what En Route is, this is off-campus events. And how this works is uh, usually once a month, um, our team will rent a bus and take students off campus and do a cool activity. Uh, this could be going up to one of our local ski hills to go skiing or snowboarding, uh, or just see a Binyal some snow there. Uh, or it could be going downtown Vancouver, uh, maybe during Christmas time, which is coming up, so they can go see some lights and some shopping and do some stuff there. Uh, or go downtown Vancouver to watch the Whitecaps play, uh, which is our local professional soccer football team uh, that we have in town as well. So, and they're always doing something different uh, every single month. Uh, so it's really cool that we try to do as much as we can for students on campus, but also give you an opportunity to experience the best of things outside of the campus as well. Now this is, I'll just mention very quickly. Um, if you come to Canada and you study with us, I know you're already gonna be traveling abroad and studying abroad and that whole aspect. But uh, we give our international students the opportunity to possibly travel more with your education. So if you are interested in seeing more of the world through education, we can help you with one of our 80 plus institutional partnerships worldwide. Uh, so our international students are also allowed to take part in any of our other study abroad or summer school programs that we have. So potentially if you wanna do a summer program at say Nanyang Technical University in Singapore, uh, or do a semester abroad in Europe, uh, wherever that is, whichever part of Europe you want to go to, uh, you could potentially do that. Uh, so coming to Canada would not, is not just a full stop, the only country you might need to go to for your journey. Uh, if you want to see more of the world through education, we can help you do that as well. Now, with that, let's shift focus over to our academic programs. At UFE, we have over 100 different possibilities of programs. But most of those programs are at the undergraduate level. Uh, UFE is primarily an undergraduate school. And this is either a two-year diploma or a four-year bachelor's degree at the undergraduate level. Uh, we do have a couple master's programs and post-degree programs. The majority of stuff that we do is either a diploma or a four-year bachelor's degree undergraduate level. Uh, so my first couple slides are going to be focusing mainly on those undergraduate programs. Starting off, uh, we actually have the School of Business, um, which is my actual former program. So fun fact, uh, I am actually a graduate from the school. Uh, I am an alumni. I did my bachelor's of business administration with a human resource management major. Uh, oh, maybe that was a, a couple of years ago. But this is my former program. Uh, and it's one of our most popular programs that we have as well, which is in the School of Business. Again, either a two-year diploma or a four-year bachelor's degree. Now, one of the best things that we offer our students is the opportunity to potentially start in the diploma and then move into year three of the bachelor's degree. Um, and so this is for students who potentially uh, maybe have a little bit lower marks uh, or you're just a little hesitant about doing a full four-year degree. Uh, it's a great place to potentially start in the two-year diploma and then move up into the four-year degree. Within the four-year degree, uh, we also have the majors that you see on the screen there. So they have areas of marketing, finance, accounting, HR, international business. Now, if you're unsure what major you want to do right now, that's okay. Don't worry. Uh, you don't actually have to choose your major until at least going into your third year. Uh, in fact, the first two years of the business program are all general business. So you get to do a little bit of each of the program disciplines and then choose which major you want to go into going into your third year. Uh, the business program is also one of only four business programs in our province that is internationally accredited. Uh, it is internationally recognized for its quality uh, and for its you know, ability to uh, provide students with some great outcomes for their career after they graduate as well. Uh, again, one of only four schools in the area, there's the University of British Columbia, Simon Fraser University, the University of Victoria, and us, the University of the Fraser Valley, uh, which have an internationally accredited business program. One last thing I'll mention about the School of Business is that if you are interested in co-op, they have one of the biggest co-op selections. Uh, I've seen so many of my colleagues when I was a student take part in co-op and then end up working for that uh, organization after they graduate. 
Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, also, the professors who are in the School of Business are either current or former industry professionals. So they are constantly bringing in real world case scenarios into the classroom. Uh, as I mentioned before, you know, we're, much, we're very much focused on the, the hands-on career focused education. So it's not just learning the theory of business. You get to do presentations, case studies, group work, lots of group work in business, lots and lots and lots of group work in business. Uh, you definitely learn how to, 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 to manage a team very quickly working into the school of business. So it is the best of both the theory and the practical side in the business world. Next, moving on to our applied sciences. And again, this will talk more about combining theory with practical application, very much so within our science programs. So within the science programs, we have our Bachelor of Science, uh, which has program majors in biology, chemistry, physics, computer science, geography, math and stats, as you see there as well. Uh, we also have a Bachelor of Agricultural Science or two-year agriculture technology diploma. And then we also have a Bachelor of Kinesiology, which is sports science. In fact, that's the photo that you see on the screen there. Now, I mentioned kind of the blending of the theory and the practical side, and that is no more evident than in all of our science programs. Now, you may have heard that in Canada or North America in general, you know, if you go into a science program, science students often don't get hands-on laboratory work until sometimes their third, maybe even fourth year of their program. We don't do it that way here at UFE. At UFE, we want to make sure that you get as much hands-on practical laboratory experience and potential research experience as possible during your entire degree. So that's why you get laboratory access from your very first week on campus. In our science programs, for every single one of your courses that you do here, you're going to be on campus twice a week, once for a lecture and once for a lab. So for your entire four-year degree, for all of your science courses, you go lecture, lab, lecture, lab, lecture, lab. So once again, really trying to learn how the theory of everything ties in to the practical hands-on nature of science. And let's just be honest, it's the hands-on laboratory work that is a lot more fun uh, when you're doing science stuff as well. Uh, our UFE program, science programs, have one of the most laboratory intensive programs in the entire area. Uh, if you're interested in doing your own research, students have sometimes done their own undergraduate research as early as the second year. Uh, there's also paid research assistant positions with professors, helping them with research, potentially co-authoring journals with professors while you're still in your undergrad. Uh, it is a fantastic program for students who really want to get into not just learning the, the, the practical side of things, but also still getting into the research side uh, and doing your own undergraduate research, which can really help for future master's and graduate programs afterwards as well. Uh, and once again, co-op, do it, uh, available for these programs as well. Moving on, we then move to the Bachelor of Arts as well as the liberal arts diploma. Now the, the Bachelor of Arts, this is for the social sciences and the humanities. Uh, things like psychology, sociology, anthropology, criminology, all of those ologies kind of rolled into there as well. Uh, but we also have some great programs in global development studies, uh, environmental studies, economics, political science, uh, and more. Uh, really there's over 18 different program options under the Bachelor of Arts. Uh, making the Bachelor of Arts one of our most flexible program options that students can do. So in this program, if you want to combine uh, a psychology major with a biology minor, you could do that. Uh, if you want to do an economics major with a business minor, you could do that. Uh, there's lots of different ways to combine study passions into one degree within the arts. And like I said, it's a very flexible program in terms of combining subjects from multiple different study areas into one degree. Uh, also really proud to say that our liberal arts programs, the Bachelor of Arts, Liberal Arts Diploma, uh, also qualify for co-op. Uh, not every school in North America you know, allows the, the arts students access to co-op. You know, sometimes it's usually just STEM or business schools that have the co-op options. Um, but our College of Arts, that's the, the main kind of department uh, for this faculty, they have done such a great job in allowing, giving students opportunities for work experience before they graduate and seeing how the courses that they've taken here can translate over into the work world. Regardless if you do a, a history degree uh, or if you do a, a communications degree, they do a fantastic job in showcasing um, how these degrees can be leveraged into future careers as well. Can't talk more, can't talk highly enough of how much work they've done in that area and how much great work they do uh, in terms of giving students access to career experience before they graduate. 
Next, we have the fine arts. So we just talked about the social sciences uh, and the humanities. Now let's talk about the creative arts, both in the digital art and more of the traditional art form. I gotta say, I love talking about this program, probably because I can't do it. There's a reason I went into business and not into one of these creative arts pro uh, programs, uh, but they're fantastic. Um, and I have to say, you know, our graphic design and media arts programs, I have never seen more applications come in for these programs than I have throughout the pandemic. It has been such a cool thing to see. Uh, and right now within the, the Vancouver area, there's lots of different work going on uh, within the art and design scene uh, in Vancouver. So if you're interested in graphic design, uh, we do have a two-year diploma option or a four-year degree option. Uh, the two-year degree in graphic design is for the most part very much concentrated within the graphic design uh, program, the graphic design courses, and can really give you a great foundation to, to move off and get a career within you know, doing graphic design uh, after that program. But the four-year degree, what that gives students is a little bit more opportunities to add in other disciplines, other types of skill sets. For instance, you could do things in web design, photography, and film, and learn how to integrate your graphic, your art skills into that. Uh, there's areas of maybe doing you know, some business courses if you want to go into your own business as a graphic designer. And there's also some great options for practicums, internships, co-ops within the degree. So really good idea to round out extra skill sets within the degree option of graphic design. One thing I will just quickly mention about all of these programs, whether it's media arts, visual arts, graphic design, is if you are interested in getting into the program, it does require a portfolio. So you do need to submit about 10 to 15 different pieces of artwork in order to be assessed for entrance into the program. So if you are interested in graphic design, uh, let us know, send us an email, and I can give you details about what is required for that portfolio. Next, we have what's called the Faculty of Professional Studies. Uh, there's a very diverse group of programs in here. Uh, starting off, we have our IT program, Computer Information Systems, uh, either a two-year diploma or a four-year degree. Uh, so you'll notice we do separate computer information systems from computer science. That was under the Bachelor of Science. Uh, very closely related, but they are separate programs. Uh, and then just below that, we have what I like to call our most unique program, aviation. But more specifically, this is pilot training combined with either a business diploma or business degree at the same time. Uh, so if you're interested in becoming a commercial airline pilot, let us know and I can give you more details about how that can work for you. Uh, and then just below that, we have our human services program, social work, community support worker, early childhood education, adult, and, uh, sorry, child and youth care, adult education as well, uh, those areas uh, under the human support programs. Now, lastly, my last program slide are those graduate programs that I mentioned. Again, not that many, we're mostly an undergraduate school. Uh, we do have a master's of social work, master's of criminology, master's of educational leadership for licensed K to 12 teachers. Uh, we have, which is hands down our most popular program right now, a data analysis certificate. Um, that is an 18 month program with a built in co-op. Uh, and with, if you're looking to, to really launch a career within in the, the Vancouver area, uh, data analysis is a great place to start. And then after that, we have a migration uh, and citizenship, either certificate or diploma. And that's it. Those are all of the graduate programs that we offer. Again, mostly everything is at the undergraduate level. Now, moving forward, I'm going to be talking about admissions requirements, but I'm only really going to be touching on the undergraduate courses. Uh, if you are interested in the grad programs, let us know at the end, and I'll touch on those. But for right now, I'm going to focus on the undergraduate admissions requirements. So how does that work for admissions requirements? Well, I'm going to talk in general sense. I'm not going to go through every single one of our programs because we'd be here forever. Uh, but in general, we break up our admissions requirements into two ways. We have our English requirement, and then we have the program requirement. Now the English requirement for all of our programs, whether it's a diploma, a degree, uh, or a master's program, can be satisfied with an IELTS score of 6.5 with no band less than six. Now IELTS isn't the only test that we accept. We accept a lot of other tests, whether it's the TOEFL, the Duolingo, Kale, Pearson's, lots of different options. I'm just using IELTS as an example. Um, after the IELTS, the English requirement, we then have the program requirement. Uh, and this can be different for each program. For instance, in business, uh, we're gonna be looking at your grade 12 mathematics and at least one other academic course. Bachelor of Science, we're gonna look at mathematics and your science courses as well. And in terms of 
average, we would need, depending on the course, anywhere from a 67 to about a 75% average within there. Now, not every course has to be at 75% average or at the 67% average. Uh, there are some changes in between, but in general, just so you know, it's around that 67 to 75% average that you need minimum to be able to get into the programs. Now, just quickly going back to the English requirement, the IELTS 6.5 with no band less than six. Now, one of the biggest questions we always get asked is, what if you don't meet that English requirement? Is there any way to do a little bit of upgrading around there? And the answer is yes, we can do a little bit of English upgrading at the university. Um, we can go as low as an IELTS 5.5 with no band less than five. Um, and at that point, you will need to do about two semesters of English upgrading before you start your program. Um, so if you are here and you think your English is going to be a little bit lower than the IELTS score 6.5 with no band less than six, um, send us an email, come talk to us, and we can give you more details about how that pathway could work for you. Dates and deadlines. So we are a tri-semester system. Um, right now, uh, we're just finishing up applications and everything and putting off the final details for our upcoming January semester. Um, but as we speak, applications are currently open for next September 2022 and next May 2022. September is kind of our main intake. Uh, that is the, the start of the academic year. 99% of all of our programs have a fall semester start date as well. And so those applications are currently open and will stay open until the middle of April. And now for those of you who might want to start earlier, we do have a limited program availability for a May start, but we do have some programs available in May. Um, so if you're interested in coming a little bit earlier, let us know and we can give you kind of the list of programs that are available for May. Uh, those are open now and we'll stay open. Well, it's actually a little bit later, probably February 1st. We'll keep that open for it as well. So how do you apply? Well, first and foremost, Probably a good idea to ch uh, choose a program and check the entrance requirements. Uh, if you're not sure about those entrance requirements, uh, we'll give you some details on how to contact us at the end of this presentation. Feel free to reach out. We'd be more than happy to, to kind of book a one-on-one -on -one session with you or just chat over email uh, about your entrance requirements before you apply. After that, what you want to do is apply online. We have our own application portal through our website. And in that application portal, you'd be asked to upload a copy of your IELTS score or English test a copy of your academic transcripts, and a copy of your passport. Now, once we do, once you have those uploaded and completed your application, uh, if everything looks great after the first review, you would then move on to step four, which is getting your offer letter. And then to accept your offer and to actually be admitted into the university, we go up to step five, which is paying a deposit and sending your official documents. And how much the deposit is depends on what type of visa you're gonna be applying for. Um, in Canada, there's two types. There's the regular visa, and then there's what's called the SDS, Student Direct Stream Visa. Um, that's the fast track visa processing. There's a lot of different requirements our Canadian government has set in place for people to meet that. Um, but if you meet the SDS requirements, um, the, the visa processing can happen in about 20 days. Um, and then we have the regular visa processing time, which can take anywhere from, depending on eight weeks to 15 weeks for visa processing under the regular stream. Uh, if you're applying as a regular visa candidate, you would have to pay one semester of tuition deposit for the regular visa stream. And as an SDS visa candidate, you would have to pay for two semesters, one academic year uh, under the SDS category rules. Now those SDS rules, not our rules, that is set by the Canadian government. Uh, they're the ones who wanna see a, at least one full year of tuition paid before you can apply for that visa. But two options one semester deposit or the two semester deposit, depending on your visa category. Once we have the deposit and the official documents, uh, you will then really then you'll then get your letter of acceptance. Congratulations, you are fully admitted into the university. You have your LOA, the letter of acceptance, and it's that letter of acceptance you need to then apply for your study permit. Uh, so you can't apply for the study permit until you're fully accepted into the university. Uh, and again, that study permit, two different options. I also highly, highly recommend applying as early as possible for the university. So that way you can apply as early as possible for the visa. Uh, the visa itself, that can sometimes be the, the longer process and you wanna give yourself as much time as possible to, to maybe get those documents in, fix any issues that the visa officers might come across. Uh, so the earlier you apply for the university program, the 
earlier you can apply for that visa as well. Now I mentioned the deposit. Uh, so let's talk about costs and fees and how much it costs to come to UFE. Uh, well, I am very happy to say that UFE is one of the most affordable universities in Canada. Uh, in fact, our, our tuitions are on par sometimes with two-year colleges out in Ontario and those areas. We work really hard to try to keep this as affordable as possible for all of our students. Um, tuition, as you can see here, starts at just over 15,000 Canadian dollars per year. Now there's this little star here because it says it starts here. Um, this is for 24 credits over two semesters. Some students take more credits than that within an academic year. Sometimes they take 30 or 33 credits per year. Um, so typically for tuition, you can expect to pay a minimum of around 15,000 Canadian per year, but then go up anywhere to about 19 to $20,000 per year of study, depending on how many credits you would take every year. But starts at about the $15,000 range is for the minimum. After that, when you add in all of the books, supplies, living expenses, living on campus, other living expenses for food and that, uh, you can expect to pay around $30,000 per year of study for the tuition and living expenses combined. Uh, living expenses, just for very basic budgeting, I always tell students to budget around $1,000 to $1,300 per month as you're living here uh, to help cover for rent and food and that. So again, budgetary wise, tuition, living expenses, around the $30,000 mark is what you wanna to expect to budget. Now, the good news is we do have some scholarships available for high academically achieving students. Uh, right now, the biggest one that we offer is $20,000. Uh, that is a total scholarship that would be given out and $5,000 per year over the course of a four year degree. Now, to earn one of these scholarships, there's nothing else you need to do other than to apply for your program. These are all academic scholarships. So when you apply and you submit your transcripts with all of your grades, we will look at your transcript and consider you for one of these scholarships. So no extra work. All you need to do is apply for the program and submit your transcripts, and you will possibly be able to win one of our entrance scholarships there. Now, my very last slide uh, that I have for you here is actually a survey. Uh, this is an alumni survey um, that happened a couple of years ago, people like myself who have graduated. And we asked them, what did you think about UFE? Uh, did you like it? Uh, did you find it useful? Would you recommend it to other people? And as you can see on the screen, we got fantastic results. In fact, if you look at this one, 98% of people with a UFE degree were satisfied with the education and satisfied with what they had here. This is incredible. In fact, if you look all across Canada, you know some of the biggest schools in Canada don't even have a 98% satisfaction survey rate. Um, our students who leave here, they, they love it. I'm, I'm an alumni, I sit on the board of directors for the Alumni Association here. You know, I hear the stories every single day about how graduates love UFE, love the, the community, the culture that we have here. And then when they graduate, you know, find the education that they, they did here, find their time here extremely useful in terms of the next stages of their journey and finding careers. Uh, so hopefully uh, we'll be able to welcome you here to Canada sometime soon as one of our students uh, and help you uh, move on to the next portion of your career and your life as well. So with that, that is the end for the formal presentation. Um, if you wanna follow us more, feel free to get a hold of us uh, on social media. Our two biggest ones we use right now are Facebook and Instagram. Uh, so you can see those handles there if you want to get in touch with us uh, on Facebook and Instagram. We're not on TikTok yet, but I have a feeling eventually we're going to have to be. Uh, but not yet. Right now we're, we're Facebook and, and Instagram mostly. Uh, we do have some YouTube videos uh, that you can see that here uh, as well. And then if you want, uh, in the chat section, uh, my colleague, Mohammed, uh, he's put down some of those links to the Facebook and Instagram account, as well as some email addresses, one for myself and then one for the general international account as well. Uh, so feel free to take a look at those, uh, write those down uh, if you need to get a hold of us.